Season 15, Episode 4. Last time on Races to Places, I blasted up some snowdrifts. As usual, let's kick things off with a fact about Iceland. Did you know that beer was banned in Iceland until 1989? A prohibition of beer began in 1915 and ended in 1989 after a referendum vote by the population. Now, on the 1st of March, Icelanders celebrate Björdagurin or Beer Day, because I certainly pronounced that wrong. So, it's time for me to rise and shine. Here in Iceland, during the summer, it never really gets dark and experiences white nights. This is due to Iceland's proximity to the Arctic Circle and creates a natural phenomenon in which the setting sun doesn't dip below the horizon. Well, it's time to get up. The thing is, here in Iceland, it never gets dark in the summer, so Whenever you wake up in the night, you think it's time to get up, but it's not. It can be like three, four, five in the morning. It's not time to get up. So I woke up so many times, but actually didn't need to get up. Sitting on the bike all day, hamstrings get really tight and then you get cramps so I like to stretch everything out in the morning. Today I'm going to head west and pass through a place called, hang on, let me try it, Kolofshad da Heidi and explore the West Fjords. Iceland adventure was unfolding, I couldn't believe how epic the landscape was. It's a truly beautiful place. Here we are in one of the northern fingers of the West Fjords, Iceland, and we just stumbled up across this shipwreck. 
Ida, I think is how you pronounce it. Maybe, I just made that up, but uh, as with every shipwreck, this one's probably got a story and I'm going to have a look at what that is later. But the last time I remember seeing a shipwreck like this was in Namibia and it was super hot on the coast of Namibia and today in Iceland, it's not so hot. So here I am with another shipwreck, beautiful place, super peaceful and quiet. I really just stopped because I've been riding all day and I wanted a break, so um, a great place to stop. You can see the other, another finger over there, I call them fingers because they're like fingers. Another finger over there with the snow in the distance. Yeah, it's just so, it's desolate I think is the word. There's hardly any houses, it's just open landscape. <laughs> After yesterday's epic snow climbs, this should be easy, but I wanted to jump off Norman and check that the ground would support his weight first. So it's quite hard, so should just be able to ride over it. He says. As I ascended, the winds picked up and it made filming with my tripod a nightmare. Here in Iceland, bikes are free to explore the stunning landscapes, but they must remain on the designated trails. I regularly talk about the freedom a motorcycle gives a human to explore, and I revel in it. But I must recommend Iceland to those who don't ride a motorcycle too. There are companies on the island with fantastic luxury off-road vehicles, meaning everyone can get out there and explore these wonders. Let's go and see. We can get up here. Not always up for a challenge. Training, whoa! Nice and easy on the throttle. Quite loose and some big stones. Oh, and side stand down. Need to remove the side stand switch. And here we are, at the collection point. <laughs> wow, check out that view. <laughs> Beautiful. So we made it. And let me just show you the collection point for the water up here. They built this, so there is this waterfall. The water collects in here and comes into these big tanks here so there's two tanks in there that's where the water goes down all the way to the hut and if there's excessive 
water in the tanks, it just goes over the overflow. At the moment it's just flowing straight through because the, the generator is not working. But it's so cool to see that this family have built their own hydroelectric power source living on a small farm in the middle of a fjord. Wow, what a view. Let's see if we can clean it on the way down without putting a foot down. It's so easy with all these big rocks. Well, that was a bit of fun. Wow. Proper tracks. To be really careful on this uh, green stuff. And here, you know, there's a snow drift you can see. Look at the tunnel under there. We can probably teeter across here, but we definitely don't want to end up down there. Nobody been here. And obviously the sheep have walked across here. It's quite, it's like ice look. And it's very easy, as easy as this looks, it's very easy for the bike to end up down there. And that's definitely where you don't want to be. So, it's this point we say, eh, it's not worth it. Well, you better like rocks, cause there's a lot of them up here. Just get smooth, look, watch. Just bit of mud, and then, bam, into rocks again. I'm no bird specialist, so I have no idea even if it was a puffin, but they're pretty cute little looking birds. So. A little video of them. What an awesome place it is up here. I often think like this. A couple of weeks ago, I was in my workshop spinning the spanners. Today, I'm standing under a magnificent waterfall. Isn't this planet a fantastic place? Hi everyone, can you believe that it's 10 years since I started making videos on my YouTube channel? I'd like to thank you all for following along and for all the comments you make in the comments section below each video. I love reading them. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button and more importantly the bell icon so you get instant notifications when I release a new video. More so however, if you want to see priority viewing of my video episodes, podcasts and even special features, you can do so over on patreon.com slash linden Poskett. You can check it out at the link in the top right corner. Thanks again and enjoy this video.
As you can tell, when I was younger and it snowed at Christmas, I was the first one out there on a sledge, bicycle, or even a motorcycle. <laughs> Next time on Races to Places. Check this out, it's amazing. Absolutely winner.